Welcome to a new series about random walks. Uh, I'm pretty excited for this because the random walk is something I didn't really learn about until graduate school, but it's something that um, even a, a, a freshman or, or, or a high school student can understand. Um, it's useful in modeling things that have random elements to them. So like the stock market can be ran, uh, excuse me, can be modeled as a random process. Um, the motion of particles in a liquid can be modif can be modeled uh, as a random walk. And so we're going to start today just by building a simple random walk in one dimension. Um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have two objects. I'm calling them Kramer and Josh. I'm naming them after a couple of recent commenters on the channel. Um, another way to get your name in a code is to head over to Patreon and, uh, and, and support us at the... Um, uh, at the comment worthy level. Uh, the Kramer and Josh have been recent commenters, so we're naming a couple of spheres after them. Kramer is going to be a blue sphere, Josh is going to be a green sphere, and basically Kramer and Josh are going to move randomly up and down along the Y axis. So the way we're going to set this up is each uh, step of time, they're going to take a step of 0.1 either upward or downward. That's our dy value here is 0.1. So the way we're animating this is with a while loop. Uh, so we just got it set to while true for now, so it'll run forever, however long we want it to. I've got a rate statement there um, to get us 10 frames per second, so it's pretty straightforward to watch. And then we've got a basic update here. So we're modifying Kramer's position and Josh's position by dy multiplied by up or down. So this is a function I've defined up at the top. This is going to randomly return a plus one or a minus one. So here we've got our function defined up or down. Um, and basically we're, we're going to do a coin toss. We're going to pick a random number between zero and one. If that number is greater than a half, uh, then up or down will return a value of plus one. And so we'll move up one unit in the, uh, in the y direction. Um, and if it's not, if it's less than 0.5, then we'll return a negative one and they'll move down one unit in the y direction. So it's it's a coin toss. It's 50% up or 50% down. Um, I've included a, a little box here to remind us where y equals zero is, just so as our animation proceeds along, we can watch it. And then we've got a couple of graphs here where we're graphing each of their positions versus time. So we can kind of get an idea of the overall picture of what's going on. Uh, so let's hit control two to run this code. Again, all these codes are available um, on GlowScript in a, at a link in the uh, description below. So here we've got our animation. We've got, uh, and I already forgot which is which. Uh, let's see, Kramer is blue and Josh is green. So Kramer is blue. So uh, again, they're just moving, you know, it's basically a coin toss each time. They're moving either up or down, 50% um, chance of either one. Um, and basically what that means is that they're basically going to hover around zero because you've got um, an equal probability of adding uh, a positive or adding a negative. But basically once one of them makes kind of progress one way, um, it's gonna hover around until it makes progress uh, you know, back the other way. Um, and right now we're kind of seeing a picture of what you'd expect. You'd expect a 50% chance of them to be above zero or below zero, and that's exactly what you have here. You've got one of them above and one of them below. Um, so with a sample size of two, we've, we've, uh, we've already demonstrated a pretty cool concept. Um, here we've got the graph of their motions. Uh, again, it looks kind of like a stock market. Um, here we've got the, the time. Now the time value is it, it's kind of arbitrary. I just picked an arbitrary value for the time step and for the distance step. So don't put too much stock in these numbers. Um, but the important thing to note is that we've got them wiggling. Basically, you know, each step they've got an equal probability of moving up or moving down. Um, so we've got Kramer above zero right now. We've got Josh below zero right now. It could have gone the other way. Um, oops, I did not mean to open that. Um, in fact, if we run this again, we might get something, or we, we should get something different, um, or we're likely to get something different, I should say. Uh, here we've got uh, Kramer uh, uh, mostly above, Josh mostly below. Um, Josh has kind of uh, jutted down to, to, to below a little bit more. Uh, but basically, this is the type of pattern that you expect for a random walk. Um, you know, it's equally likely for them to move up or down. And so basically, each one of these little jagged things you see is, is, is a change in their direction. Um, so you've got this equal probability of moving up and down. That by itself doesn't seem like too much. I mean, it's basically the computer flipping coins all day. 
But where it gets interesting is where you start to explore some of the statistics. And so what we're going to take a look at in the next video, let me give you a little preview of what we're going to see next time, is we're going to take a hundred random walkers. So here we're getting rid of the names, we're making it a little less personal, unfortunately. Here we're going to take a hundred random walkers, and we're not going to animate them, we're just going to make the graph of them. And we're going to run this, and we're going to get 100 random walk graphs. And so here we've got them all kind of spreading out. Um, you can see we end up with these little pockets here where nobody walks, or we end up with these little checker patterns where you've got basically somebody in every possible location um, at that point in time. You see it kind of spreads out in this cone. One of the things we're going to see is that it obeys these interesting statistics where your average should be zero and your uh, uh, average distance, meaning the average magnitude, should go like the square root of the number and that's what you get here is a square root curve. So this is what we're going to take a little bit more uh, detailed look at next time. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you then. Bye-bye.